Hello everyone, as you have seen, I finished a sweater. Let me show you in the full glory and then I'm going to tell you how I knitted it. Let me tell you about the pattern. The pattern is a paid for pattern and I'm going to show you over here all the information in regards to, in regards to the yarn. So to knit this sweater you need fingering weight yarn and you have measurements over here, the needles that are recommended, I think the um, US size 2 and US size 4 is recommended and then you have sizes. So here is how it looks. I put the link down below to Reverly. The designer of this pattern is amazing, Caitlin Hunter. And if you follow me over here or on Instagram, you know I'm on the color work kick now, which means I like to knit color work. I don't know. And normally I would knit socks and lately I designed a few sock patterns. So on the screen, maybe my collection, I'll put them down below too, just if you're interested and you'd want to maybe try to do a color work with some smaller object than a full sweater. And thank you so much for supporting me that way. Right, in regards to design, as you can see, it's a beautiful sweater. I bought the pattern when it was, I think, released or maybe something or some later, because I really liked the, the whole idea. Although that's not my style, but I knew, I know someone in my, I would know someone in my life that would love horses. And it's, it's such a not, it is such a beautiful, beautiful color design. It's, it screams professional. <laughs> So I knew someone else is, as I knew that someone is going to have a birthday and I went through the easiest way and I asked the closest person to tell me what sweater of those sizes because you have a table in the pattern and I just copied that table and I forwarded it to a person pick me the size because you have measurements of everywhere which is the closest that that person's were sweaters so <laughs> luckily that person took a measuring tape pulled out the sweater and just measured the sweater. So still, it's a surprise. Once we had that sorted, was looking for, I went to my stash and started looking for yarn. I'm going to the process hours. I went on Reverly, I went to the project pages of the pattern and you could see loads of people have knitted the sweater and I really would want to have some gradient colors. But only thing I could find that I have two skeins because that's what was suggested in the pattern. And I know designers kind of give you, tell you you need more than maybe you would need. Or maybe this yarn was just so generous for me. So what I knew, I knew I have color for horses. So I had this Drops Flora, which is 65%, Wool 35%, Alpaca. It is a non-superwash, I think. Non-superwash, so all natural. And then I found uh, this yarn. This is the yarn I got from Knit Crate. I did not write the month that I got it because it's a club. Every month you get yarn. It depends on the club you pick. I recorded lately a finished object. I recorded a lately unboxing of those clubs. So maybe I'll put a few over here just for you to check it out. Straight away, I'm going to put this video as, um, what you call it? paid promotion because the yarn I use, I received it as a gift. Uh, I received it to open up on my YouTube channel and show it to you guys. And I have an athlete link down below, so maybe that's fair. But actual pattern, like I said, I bought it with my money. Um, so there's no connection with the designer of here whatsoever in regards to collaborations. So I'm just saying. Now, so I found this yarn and it's completely different blend, but it's a fingering weight yarn. It's 50% superwash merino, 30% nylon and 20% silk. It's called Vidalana Linen Jewel. Over here you can see it. And over here you can see it. From perspective of yardage, those two yarns, 400 yards, that's 460 yards. So according Listen now carefully. According to the labels, this yarn should be thinner than this one. I know it's a light colour and most of you will might think now that... Can you see it? So the yarn should be thinner than the... I don't know what colour is that. Maybe let's call it purple, but it's not purple. And I know you may say that the white kind of makes things bigger. But I think it's not per se yarn, it's the blend of the yarn because like, is it over oh, here we have linen and silk and I don't know, it's, it's I think it's, it's, I was knitting on it and it felt 
thinner. So yes, I mixed up two different blends with two different brands to knit this sweater. And yes, you can do it too. So now, before I forget, I'm going to run down and I'm going to tell you how much how much grams do I have over here? Obviously, yardage wise, I would not be able to tell you per sale because of those two, unless I edit together and do the average of those two. So I'll give you an idea how much I use, but you can do it yourself, right? So I'm going to tell you only how heavy this is because this is a size one. So the smallest size from the pattern. But before I say that, let's go and wait it because I always forget. Stay tuned. I'm back. So the sweater weights 235 grams. 235 grams. If we divide it by two, which means yes, okay, you would need a little bit extra than the 100 grams of each yarn. However, that's probably, we have that and I have loads of leftovers. Ooh, stairs. And let me tell you about the constructions and what I have changed in the pattern. This is a top-down sweater, so you start from the color. I'll pick the light one. The pattern only tells you to cast on, so it doesn't tell you what kind of cast on you would do. So I can probably tell you that I did over here, uh, I did over here German twisted cast on. If you have never done that one before, go check my tutorial. I'll put it down the link below. I just do it my way. Check it out. I explained it from perspective of getting into the lake and then up the mountain. Maybe that would be interesting a video for you to watch next. Anyway, so once we did that in the size one, in the other sizes you have some preparation to go on, but I went straight away to short row shaping. That's why you may notice there's some bigger white section than in the front, and that way that bigger section pushes it up, and then that way we have color and we have a difference over here. Beautiful. When I'm in this stage, maybe let's point out the beautiful tag that I have, and you can get my tags in my knitting I love dot com go shop and you'll check those and I call them color because the heart is like this and when you have a peek inside you we have a sheep and then we're going to the chart and we're playing with it Ooh, and that was quite interesting normally let me tell you I like color work up till maybe six stitches when you you know play with the color for the floats in the back but over here you may find even nine eight seven so they're long floats and I catch floats. So I'm going to maybe show you straight away because probably show me, show me the back of the sweater. So in regards uh, chart, it was just following and I made maybe two or three mistakes, but I always say, um, look at the chart, what kind of um, stitches, color stitches you have in the round below. So when I had, I'm going to show you in a sec. So these are my floats if you want to see them. You see them? I think that's a brilliant job, <laughs> if I can compliment myself. <laughs> and here is for the body. So as you can see, the beginning and the end of the round is in the, in the back, not on the side of the sweater. So back to the chart. When you're reading a chart in the color work, what I like to do if I knitted a certain section and ha it has something visible, like Let's say I have this little bit and when I'm knitting, I'm trying to make sure that the chart always points at a certain point <laughs> or the stitch points at that point. So if I made a mistake over here, I will just look back and I would correct it because it happens all the time, all the time. When I said I made a mistake, it was like maybe I did that section and then realized that I'm on the wrong, I'm over wrong color of the stitch at some point. And then over here, I have this section that I kind of knew. You have a smaller section that you follow per se, and then it spreads out to a bigger section that you have to follow. So repeat that's what I want to say. Repeats are kind of smaller at the beginning and then wider. So that's that. So focus and do it. And I was in a rush because I wanted to knit it quite fast. So I did maybe this section in one day and then I did another section another day. Then I had to wait for respond because I wanted to know because this gave me 30 centimeters. And I'm thinking because it is for a smaller person, this will drop down. So I needed to know how long I need to knit from the a side collar to the wrist. Um, and that way, then I follow because you don't have that information in the table per se. And this is for, a, this is very good information for a knitter. If I ever knit a sweater for you, this is what I'll be asking. <laughs> so from the color, and I know sometimes colors are smaller, wider, and you never know, but we just go with the flow and let's guess. That's what I'm talking. So from the color of here, 
and then I did just a straight and you may notice I have different color work going on above here. Battery! Sure. Where was I? So over here and then I decided to do just the straight arms and in the pattern you have two options either to go with a short or a longer one but the longer one is the one that you're knitting a certain period of time and then you just decreasing it so it's more like a and that shape. But um, I knew that I'm going to knit it for a person that will grow so I thought maybe just go straight and go longer with the body. So at the moment it could be slightly a tunic. So again I ask a question. How long is from the collarbones? You know you have collarbones going here and here so you have those two. From that moment how long it would be to have it like you know dress wise. <laughs> So we went with, I think that was 50 centimeters, and we went over here with also 50, 55, and I was measuring from perspective that I was knitting. Obviously the yarn after blocking, and blocking is just putting in the bow, check my Instagram, leaving it for 20, 30 minutes in the kind of nice soap smell, and then rinsing, squeezing, putting in towel, and then putting it flat on a towel for, through the night, it dried. You know, you know, half a day and a night it dried fully. So uh, that's in case you don't know what to do with the woolly sweaters. Like I said, I have a sheep over here. So that means that it is all natural fiber. Actually, it is all natural fiber. So we have wool, alpaca, linen and silk. Wow, very nice sweater. And so with the body, I just went straight and I finished with two by two and I did, I don't know, I haven't even checked what the pattern tells you in regards to binding off, but I went with switching stitches to kind of at the end, the rest round for one to one and then finish with tubular bind off. And you may think, oh my, that will take ages, you know, the tubular, but there is a video and tutorial how I do it when you just have a smaller section. So what I do, if you don't tubular bind off, you need to take, you need to leave a yarn use tapestry needle, cut the yarn and then kind of do more sewing thing. But if you decided to have the strand, no, a thread, so yeah, strand as long as the circumference, like maybe five, six times of it, um, seven times, to kind of make sure that it will last you, you will have loads of pulling. You will be doing loads of pulling. So what I did, I just did small sections and over here I knew I have a certain number of stitches and for my socks, when I do two wheel bind off, I do normally 56 stitches for two for the socks or 64. I normally wrap it five times. So I thought that would be equivalent of certain section. And then what you do, you just drop it, you just make take another piece of strand and you continue with a tubular bind off and it's so easy to just wave in and it looks seamless. So I have a video about that. Hopefully there's still space over here and if not comment down below and let me know that I don't have it here that to put it into the description because I sometimes I sometimes forget and if you say that I will just yeah it's done thank you. So if it's not so check the description in the video for sure and uh, just check what I've done there. You may also notice that the color work over here is different than in the pattern. In the pattern, you I think you have this section and then you have something else and then it repeats itself. And I thought it took too much focus of the main area and I wanted to do something different, like something smaller. And I decided I'm just going to follow with the first, first section of the body chart. And I think it looks amazing. It gives you some kind of stripes, but they're not really from the distance and you more focus on the horses. So that's what I did and I love it, love it so much. Let me know what do you think about it. And I, it's just a trail to knit for sweaters for someone. I think it's less stressful for me than if I have to pick a pattern for myself to knit. I kind of see someone wearing uh, this particular, beautiful, amazing, stunning pattern. Um, by Caitlin Hunter design and I knew it, it's for that person, for sure. <laughs> so I can't wait, today I'm going to gift it and we shall see how it goes, finger crossed. And yeah, let me know what kind of color work have you done? Have you, have you knitted any sweaters? If you haven't, have you knitted any socks? Let me know down below if you're interested to do some color work. I think I published a new tutorial how I make one stitch when I'm doing color work, actually when I was knitting this sweater. So check it out. If you if you go through my tutorials and you see that there's something of that that I could make, let me know. I'm putting it always on the side, but obviously I make tutorial if I have a project like this color work I had that I could actually present it on the knitting 
item. So thank you so much for Caitlin Hunter too for designing this beautiful sweater. I really enjoyed knitting it. Um, stunning i would say check it out if you have anyone or you are a fan of horses and um it will look stunning on you definitely go on Ravelry and also check the project pages for other people and well comment and give them some love because they it is a challenging sweater and it needs loads of work to be done to create something like this Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're going to subscribe, like, ring that bell because that way you know when I pub when I publish a new video. Um, also on this channel there is something like join button, which there are a few perks. I have for members annual coupon, co coupon code for my patterns. I have extra content for my vlogs and uh, so you can see how I was actually knitting and showing you the stages and questions and so on. Although I had a mic problem during that time. So, you know, whatever happens, you know what's going on. And there are giveaway videos. So on this channel I give I knit socks and I give them away once per month, at least in the year 2021, just to spoil that a little bit. But there are two videos for level one and level two members uh, with the socks, so check that out. Okay, I leave you be, go check and watch another of my videos. Be inspired. Bye!